As we head into County Mayo, following the railway line, you can see level crossings covered with road tarmac. It's time for me to meet up with one of the main men from Western Track, Colman O'Rahilly, in Clare Morris, where this phase of the Western Rail Corridor is due to open in 2014 and joins the existing main line from Dublin. We're not talking here about some need that may arise in the future. We're talking about a need that exists today and a population that That's exists today. Where did the campaign come from? Well, the campaign has come from the community, from the ground up. And it's rooted in the fact that on a daily basis, many thousands of people in the west of Ireland are commuting uh, to the large towns and to the cities, particularly in our area, Galway. And we have a situation where there are 40,000 people a day on the N17 uh, driving in cars to work. And those people spend an average of three or four hours a day in their cars. And they are looking for an alternative to that. And the Western Rail Corridor, this unused piece of infrastructure, which has lain idle for 30 years, will provide that alternative. You will no longer have a situation where people are travelling one to a car, but you'll have hundreds of people on the train travelling together and working on the train and making use of the time that's being wasted currently. This is voluntary? This is a voluntary campaign, yes. And it is driven by organisations from each community who signed up to become part of the West On Track campaign. And in each community there are people who have been campaigning now steadily for five years in order to bring this about. And as a result of this campaign being organised in all the towns and villages and cities throughout this whole region, we are looking at the rejuvenation of the largest piece of railway in the history of the state. How important is it to continue on to Sligo? Sligo is one of the quickest and fastest developing uh, areas in the whole of the country. It's very important that we have Cork, Limerick, Galway and Sligo connected. Besides the socio-economic benefits, this line will remove more than 20% of cars and lorries, save millions of euros in imports of fuel and thousands of tonnes of CO2 emissions per year, reduce time loss in traffic congestion, less road accidents and wear and tear from lorries. In the present economic downturn, this essential infrastructure will stimulate competitiveness, enhance enterprise viability and protect vital employment. This phase from Clermorris to Colooney near Sligo is protected under Transport 21 and is being fenced and cleared of scrub. The stretch north of Clermorris is widely known as the Burma Road because of some of the difficult terrain through which the railway runs, which must have required great engineering skills in its construction at the close of the 19th century. Kiltima is a small town on the railway line where locals have set up a railway museum in the old station store. Brian, do you remember the steam trains? Yes, I remember them well. The day went out in about 52 or 53 and the diesel came in. What was it like? Well, the smell of the steam trains was the nicest thing. You could smell it long before you ever you get to the station. You could see them shoveling the coal in and the steam hissing out the side of it. We were waiting for the train to come back for 30 years. The day the train stopped coming into Culture and the train station like this, we started trying to get them back. And we're still trying to get them back. And at least now there's movement and there's hope that it will come back. And I believe it will. I'm crossing the border from County Mayo to Sligo, through Swinford and Charlestown into Turper Curry, at the foot of the Ox Mountains, where the locals called their railway line Gold. Since it was abandoned, has it affected employment in the area? Well, of course it has affected employment in the area. It has affected employment in the sense that we do not have the proper infrastructure for large companies to invite them here. Our even small indigenous companies, we're having difficulty because we do not have a good experience of transporting freight. Is linking to the gateways like Limerick, Galway, Sligo important to you? Of course. We look at Sligo and Galway, the two made four, fourth and fifth most largest city in this country, and they're not linked together. It's important that we open this line in order to link those cities, uh, because here we're interested in tourism, so we need to get uh, tourism flowing quickly between those two cities. What about education? Well, as a mother, Duncan, of a student, I really understand fully the difficulties of not having a railway line. Most of the children here go to college in Sligo, or in Galway and Limerick. They're limited to how they can get there. Colooney is the last connection before Sligo on the Dublin line. 
So there's a working station here, and it's the point where the Western Rail Corridor has wound its way up all the way from Limerick to meet it. However, you have to search for the rail tracks. The infrastructure is still here and the right of way, but as we've travelled further north, it has been less maintained. Sligo buzzing with activity, but bringing excessive traffic congestion and a growing need for a rail commuting service. This rail line from Ennis, Galway, Clermaris to Sligo will hugely facilitate commuters in this region. Here in Road Erin have upgraded Sligo with brand new trains. With its new high standard in comfort, speed and smoothness, this main line from Dublin is also being enhanced by an improved intercity daily service. I've come 115 miles along the railway track, all the way from Limerick to Sligo City. This is the end of our journey along the Western Rail Corridor as it's currently envisioned. But our story continues all the way up to Donegal, a county once abundant in rail networks, but now left totally isolated. The last train went to Donegal in 1966. Those are the beech trees that you can see behind me, Duncan. They would have been the old County Donegal Railway, which was the original rail that linked the south of County Donegal through Barnes Gap here on into Bala Buffet and from there up into Derry City. So what happened to it? I've always reckoned it's the, the border that took away our rail. We're the only county in the country, to the best of my knowledge, that hasn't got a mainline rail. The road on my right-hand side going down through uh, Donegal Town to Sligo is our only link that actually goes through the Republic. All of our other links go through Northern Ireland. So how has this affected you in Donegal? Well, Donegal traditionally has uh, had a very high unemployment rate. Uh, I think this is because of our isolation. The only way that we can deal with D Donegal's isolation is to give it good, strong communication links with the rest of the island. At the moment, we're the only part of the country that is not going to be serviced by the new motorways. Uh, so we've been left behind there. We don't intend to be left behind in the rail. The BMW Regional Assembly also fully support this project, as it will improve the attractiveness and connectivity of the region, provide alternative commuting options to Galway, Sligo and other towns, a much needed stimulus to the economic development of the region. If we look to the future over the next five to ten years at the whole western region of Ireland and we look at its prospects, without the rail transport, if it doesn't go ahead, its future is going to come under question. If it does go ahead, it will prosper for this whole area. In our next episode of EcoI, we look at what is meant by our carbon footprint and how we can reduce it. I visit Sligo to explore some of the country's most beautiful landscapes and see why they're so popular with bird life. And I meet young innovators shaping our future in environmental research.